Friday Night Lights, it's been a tough go for the both Seneca and Iroquois programs in Region 3 this fall. These two going head-to-head -head at Bob Diffenbacher Stadium, and both should be commended the low numbers they continue mm -hmm. to battle week in and week out. Let's head out to my alma mater, where some of the students decided to show off the body paint tonight. Nice. Nicely done, fellas. We'll pick things up in the third quarter. Bobcats down three scores, but on the move, Ryan Miller gets the rock and turns the corner. He covers 17 yards on the play and into Iroquois territory later on in the drive. Isaac Passamani sells the fake beautifully, goes 34 yards to Paydirt. Seneca on the board, trailing 21 to 7. Braves would answer, though, on the ensuing drive. Michael Hoopsick with a strong run before getting tackled inside the 10 yard line. A couple plays later, the Braves would be able to punch it in as Hoopsick gets the rock yet again. He rushes in across the goal line. Iroquois picking up its first win of the season. They down my Bobcats, the final 40. To 13. Cambridge Springs visiting Cochranton tonight as we head down to Crawford County. A low scoring affair. Cardinals leading 12 7 in the fourth and punting to the Devils. Watch this play. Jared Taylor off one bounce, two bounces, and gets the football here. Taking off, trying to break some tackles and find some help here, and he gets it with a, with a convoy. Big block coming right at you down the sideline, and he is gone. Great effort, and that will be the game-winning play for Cambridge Springs as they go on to beat Cochranton 13-12 on that dramatic fourth-quarter touchdown. To Lionsville, <clears throat> excuse me, we're Conneaut area hosting Grove City this evening. First drive, and it's Grove City's Colby Nelson with the first down pickup, getting the Eagles in the red zone. Grove City would have to settle for three to take the early lead on cash. Next drive, they would find the end zone this time. Colby Nelson again would take the pitch. And he would hit the corner. In for six. Cash falls in this one, 46 to 14 to Grove City. Take a look at some other D10 scores and how about Greenville at Lakeview? It's a 20 to nothing win for the Trojans. Farrell winning a Region 1 championship, 51 nothing over Reynolds. West Middlesex over Mercer, 35 nothing. Wilmington a Region championship over Charlottesville, 37 nothing. More scores for you on the Lewis Finnison Performance Scoreboard. Hickory beating Slippery Rock, 42 21. They'll share a Region title with Sharon, who plays tomorrow. Saturday's games, Cathedral Prep visits Canisius out of Buffalo at 1 o'clock. St. Joe's, New York, visits Erie High, 7 o'clock, with the Royals making their veteran stadium football debut for this season. OHL News, the Erie Otters have waved forward Alex Gritz, and the team reports he has been sent home. Gritz played in five games this year, posting an assist after tallying 10 goals and 11 assists in 53 games last season. Speaking of which, the Otters were back on home ice, taking on the Hamilton Bulldogs, and as we mentioned in the newscast, the new member of the Erie Otters family, Otto, making his debut and getting warm and cuddly with the fans. Hamilton leading 1-0 in the second. Bulldogs staying on the attack in front of the crease. Arthur Kaliev punches it in, 2-0 Hamilton. Later in the period, it's Kaliev with his third goal of the game. He got the hat trick. He was a one-man wrecking crew. He netted all four goals for Hamilton. They go on to beat the Otters 4-1. Chad Yetman with the only goal for Erie. The Otters return to action Saturday night when they host the Guelph Storm. Men's hockey from the newly renovated Mercier Dice Center. Lakers making their home debut versus St. Lawrence. Lakers leading 1-0 late in the first. On the attack, the deflection nearly went, but a nice save there by the visitors. Later in the first, they would get on the board to get the equalizer. Zach Risto finds the back of the net. Game tied at one. However, it's Mercier's going on to win this one in overtime, 3-2. to two. The Lakers are now 2-1 and one on the season. Women's hockey in the afternoon. Mercier's making its home debut against Sacred Heart. First of two games on the weekend. Great start for the Lady Lakers in the first. Sam Isbell slipping one past to light the lamp. 1-0 Mercier's later in the first. Power play time for Maggie Knott. She'll make it 2 nothing for Mercier's on the second period. Sacred Heart getting one back here. Rachel DeLong with the power play goal to make it 2-1. Mercier's will go on to get the win, however, 5-3 in their home opener. They'll be back at it tomorrow afternoon at 2.05. To the NHL, Sabres hosting the Florida Panthers at Key Bank Center after a scoreless first period. In the second, Buffalo on the rush. Johan Larson lighting the lamp. 1-0 Sabres still in the second. Marco Scandella scores his first of the year. Sabres up 2-0. Eventually, this would have to be decided in a shootout after Jake Eichel, or excuse me, Jack Eichel scores. Casey Middlestat gets the game winner as the Sabres win it 3-2 in a shootout. PSAC women's soccer, Edinburgh visiting Mercier tonight. It's a scoreless 
tie for the Lady Lakers and Fighting Scots in the pitch. And I promise you, if that's the final score of the football matchup at Sox Harrison <laughs> Stadium for Edinburgh's homecoming today or game tomorrow, there will be uh, fists thrown down on my desk. Yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be in trouble if that yeah. does happen. When we come back on Friday Night Lights, we'll have our fans and play of the night. Plus, uh, plenty more. Stick with us here on Friday Night Lights.